Greetings, everyone. My name is Kyle Curran. I work here at the Old One Business School at Washington University in St. Louis. I want to say thank you for joining us today and taking time to explore uh, the financing options for graduate education. And this video is specifically for domestic applicants, domestic students being U.S. citizens or permanent residents. Uh, but, you know, with financial services, there are lots of options out there. We want to make sure that you're educated on what, on what programs are available to help you fund your graduate education. And along the way, I want to give you some quick tips just to help develop your financial plan of success. Your graduate education is an investment in yourself, in your time, and I do believe it will pay future dividends going forward. So, so it's important to make wise decisions and the best decisions based on your personal scenario. <clears throat> Uh, there's an old saying in business that time is money and I work in finance so it really is time is money so I thought we'd go ahead and dive into today's agenda just a quick overview we're going to discuss something called a student budget uh, we're also going to cover two types of loan programs private student loans and federal student loans these are sourced differently we're going to give an overview of the standard timelines for the processing of financial aid financial services there's some helpful links or some terms that you'll come across uh, once you join WashU. I also want to talk about, uh, you know, what is student accounting? What, what services do they offer? Uh, what is WebStack? How do refunds work? And then I think I will kind of conclude with events and maybe a little bit of Q&A. Uh, so please chime in. Let us know any questions you have along the way. We're happy to help. <clears throat> Going forward, student budget. This was our first item we were discussing. You know, what exactly is that? Well, the quick answer is student budgets basically represent the maximum amount of financial assistance that you may receive for a period of time. We call these academic years. So on the screen, you will see that I have a budget here for a full-time MBA, a standard budget. This was used last year for the 2017-18 academic term. Uh, these budgets are updated each year, so if you're looking at the 2018-19 or maybe possibly the 2019-20 academic year, whenever you're viewing this video, um, these amounts will change, so please contact the financial aid office for directions. With this budget, you will notice that we include fees, health insurance, go program, there's tuition, there's also components there for living expenses as well, uh, room and board, personal miscellaneous, books and supplies. Uh, so these budgets are annual budgets uh, that are set up to help finance or provide living allotments while you're going through school. Now the amount of student budgets will vary depending on the program of study that you're going through. Notice I said full-time MBA here, however we do have students that are attending school part-time which would have a different budget. We have students that potentially are in Washington DC attending uh, Brookings education program. Uh, those are modular programs, so the cost of attendance budget for that is vastly different. So, but the idea is that the student budget is the maximum amount of financial assistance that you may receive for a period of time or an academic year. The student budget term is going to come up a little bit later while we're going through the definitions of the loans. <clears throat> okay, types of loans. Let's dive in. First option I want to pull up is something called a private student loan. Now, a private student loan is exactly what it sounds like. It's a loan through a private bank. With these student loans, you would apply directly with your lender of choice. Now, while this video is designed for domestic students, these programs are actually available for, for both domestic and international students. So if you happen to be meeting with someone and they say, hey, I applied for the same loan you did, well, it's, uh, you know, guess what? If they're available for international students. One thing different though, for domestic students, you're typically not required to have a cosigner. Uh, however, you may utilize a cosigner if you think it will help you get a lower interest rate or better loan terms. One thing, if you're looking at using a cosigner for the loan, some of these private student loans do offer cosigner releases uh, after you make so many payments on time. I think technically it's usually three to four years of on time payments. The cosigner is waived from that loan program. But it's something you might look at whenever you're gathering and developing your financial plan of success. A couple other quick points with these private loans, they offer variable or fixed interest rates you get to choose. The rates you get ultimately depends on your credit history and the applications, as I mentioned before, are submitted directly to your lender of choice. Uh, we have no preferred lenders here at the Olin Business School. However, we do have a pretty good list of historical lenders that have been used by WashU students in the past. 
uh, you can find this list or you can access our historical list by visiting our website at www.olin.wustl.edu www.olin.wustl.edu and select the tuition and financial aid pages for your program. Uh, we'd like to provide this information. Remember that these rates will change depending on market conditions. Uh, you know, the bearable or fixed interest rates, it works just like a private loan if you're buying a car, buying a house, something along those lines. Um, with these private student loans, the maximum amount that you can receive is based on two factors. Number one, uh, what is Washington University's cost of attendance? That's a note I just mentioned before. Also, um, you know, how much is the lender willing to let you borrow? So there's a two-pronged approval process for this. Whenever you're applying for a private student loan, you do have to identify a loan period. Um, some sample loan periods have been listed below. You notice there's a summer only, there's fall and spring only. There's actually a combination loan period as well. Uh, the combination would be a fall and spring together. Um, one thing I cannot do is I can't approve a loan for your entire two-year program or three-year program, whatever it might be. Uh, so with these programs, we essentially have to apply and renew based on these specific loan periods. Um, I'm sorry I can't do that, but that's a Department of Education regulation on that. Private student loans, application process. Now you'll notice I put an underline here after tuition deposit. Well, you know, basically whenever you're applying for these, remember this is a hard hit on your credit report. And uh, it's important to do this process once you've made a decision to join Washington University. I don't recommend that you fill out four applications with four different schools on privates because that's gonna be four hits on your credit report and possibly lower your credit score. Uh, but after you place your deposit or once you're committed, uh, you would submit an application to your lender of choice. You would actually contact the Graduate Financial Services Office uh, to have a school certification process completed. We have to verify your enrollment, tuition, that you are a student at our school, and what program of study you're in. Um, once that process is completed, the lender will contact you directly to complete some final disclosures. There's a right to cancel your loan. Um, there's a timeline before they would actually do the disbursement. And so there's other details provided with this loan process. Once all the required documents are received, the lender will disperse the money directly to Washington University in St. Louis at the appropriate time. So with these programs, these are school certified. We verify your enrollment verify your tuition. We also verify to you that the funds are received to your student web stack billing account. And then uh, essentially it's a school process where the funds come in directly to the school. That's what makes this a school certified loan rather than a private loan where uh, you would receive the funds directly. Turn the page, let's go over to something called federal student loans. Federal student loans, yes, these are available for graduate students. You know, a common question I get is how do I qualify? Well, a couple of quick points here. To qualify for federal student loans, you have to be a U.S. citizen or an eligible non-citizen. You have to have a valid social security number. There might be a few, few exceptions along the way for certain candidates. Be sure to look at the FAFSA applications for details. I'll talk about FAFSA here in a moment. Uh, you have to be registered with Selective Service if you're male. Uh, you have to be enrolled at least half-time status in an eligible degree program. Uh, for example, if you're in a full-time MBA or executive MBA, those programs are full-time here, okay? However, some of our professional programs are non-standard term programs, such as our professional MBA or executive master of science and leadership. Uh, it's important that you maintain at least four and a half credits per semester uh, to maintain your enrollment in the program. You have to be, have that minimum threshold to qualify for federal student loans. Another thing you have to make grades, you have to man maintain satisfactory academic progress towards your degree program. The government's not gonna give you money to make all Fs, okay? So if you're using federal dollars, using taxpayer sources, you know, you have an obligation to actually work and pursue this, to, this portion of study. You had to sign applications on the free application for federal student aid. And in addition, you might have to meet some additional requirements along the way. If you're selected for verification, if you're selected for verification of selective service or uh, citizenship, whatever it might be, if there's an extra flag along the way, we also had to close that loop in order to process federal funds. With federal student loans, um, these programs, there's basically two pools of money available. 
One is the Federal Stafford Loan Program. This program provides $20,500 in funding per academic year. Now I'm saying per academic year, if you're going over a two year program, then that's 20,500 times two or 41,000, okay? Um, there is no requirement to demonstrate need. So whether your last name is Cronin or Buffett, uh, Warren Buffett, Jimmy Buffett, take your pick, uh, you know, we all qualify for the same programs here. Washington University determines the amount you can borrow based on, guess what? The cost of attendance minus other financial support you receive. The other financial support could be possibly if you have employer sponsorship, if you have some type of outside scholarship or potentially an institutional scholarship. Those all go into this cost of attendance number. The next program that's available is called the Federal Direct Graduate Plus Loan Program. Uh, to qualify, you have to be a graduate or professional student enrolled at least half time in an eligible program. The one other thing is you ha cannot have an adverse credit history. Okay, so you can't have a default, a loan default. You can't have a bankruptcy. Uh, there's other things like that that you have to have a good credit history. Uh, sometimes I get asked by students, what if I do not have a credit history? I'm going through grad school and my parents have supported me this whole time, so I really have no credit history. Well, no credit history also means that you have no negative credit history, so you qualify for this plus loan program. The maximum loan available is, once again, students' cost of attendance minus any other financial aid received. So the other financial aid would include that federal staff loan or a private loan or any type of scholarships or employer support for tuition. So with these programs, between the combination of these two, essentially you should be able to fund your entire graduate school, okay? Uh, the Graduate Plus program does not have an aggregate limit. The limit is that cost of school's attendance. <clears throat> with federal student loans, the application process. Well, it's a little more drawn out than the say if you're applying for a private loan. However, the process does have its place. The, prior to placing a deposit or when you're applying for admission, you can fill out a form called the FAFSA, which is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And I have the website listed here on, on the slide. So whenever you go through there, Washington University school code is 002520. One more time. 002520. Now, when filling out the FAFSA, you notice I said submit the appropriate FAFSA. Um, this will actually vary. If you go to the website right now, you will see an application for 2017 and 18, and also one for 2018 and 19. Okay, be sure to coordinate with the financial services team here to ensure you're submitting the proper FAFSA application. Step two of the process is to submit an institutional application. This is a basic uh, Word document to where uh, you identify your name, you let me know which of our degree programs you're looking at. Remember, I have full-time MBAs, professional MBAs, executive MBAs, specialized masters, uh, executive programs in Washington, D.C. Let me know which program you're looking at so I can make sure that all these dots are connected together. And then the third step would be just to contact Open Financial Services directly for additional instructions. Now, we'll note that the majority of the process after this occurs after you've committed to Washington University and placed usually a tuition deposit. Uh, once that tuition deposit is received, we would create your student record. We would verify your enrollment, the tuition and fees for the term to, the, to calculate that cost of attendance, and then we would send you some additional instructions. These additional steps will include one, an award notification where you say, I want $5,000 in Stafford loans, or I want X number of money in PLUS loans. Uh, the other parts of the process in, involve going online to a federal website and, and completing some loan entrance counseling, a couple of promissory notes, and if you're awarded a federal PLUS loan, submitting a PLUS application. Uh, the final step, which I cleverly named follow-up, is once you complete these checkpoints, be sure to circle back around in about a week or so and make sure that there's no other outstanding items that require your attention. Uh, you know, make sure that we received your PLUS loan, make sure we received your FAFSA, make sure that we received your promissory notes. You just make sure that all the documents are in place. Uh, student loans, anticipated processing timelines. Now these are very similar, but I want to give an overview of what the year looks like as far as financial services goes. Uh, with federal student loans, we typically process a couple times during the year, and these are based on whenever we have admission cycles. So for the spring semester, we actually have two. We have a professional MBA program that starts in January, 
And we also have an executive MBA program that starts in April. So between the periods of December and May, we're processing loans for students that start during the spring semester. Uh, the remaining students, for example, if you're a specialized master's or a full-time MBA, that process is usually during the summer term. And then, of course, we have some fall processes with professional MBAs and executive MBAs. So that's typically the flow. We do have students in our open enrollment program, such as our executive master of science and leadership. Um, so with those programs, we would process the loans based on what their enrollment situation is. Once they maintain half-time enrollment, that's when we're able to process federal student loans for those populations. Private student loans, and I'm saying private student loans certified. This is not necessarily when you need to apply, but usually the certification process uh, for our spring semester for our professional MBA and our executive MBA are through the months of December through May, okay? Uh, part of this process is, once again, you had to have that student record with tuition and everything. For the incoming full-time programs, and I'm going full-time MBA and SMP, this will actually vary by your program, and uh, it varies by program based on when, whenever your program starts. It usually will exclude any type of go orientation or start periods. Uh, we have to go with the official start of the fall semester for each of these programs, which can actually vary. Uh, so once again, it's one of those that we drill down once we get closer to the start date of your program. Uh, with the remainder of the fall semester, uh, the professional and executive MBA students typically follow a similar timeline. However, you will note for the private student loans that with executive MBA, we can only certify during September and October once the tuition and fees are actually set up. So, uh, so with that, it is a little more limited on the private student loan side. However, it does follow an easy flow, and I've had lots of students use these programs, both programs actually. Uh, while going through school to help finance their education. <clears throat> I want to throw a little something out here about student accounting, what they offer, uh, WebStack, and just, uh, you know, how do refunds work? <clears throat> so with the Office of Student Accounting, we actually have a central office that manages all of our student billing accounts. Now, they manage the processing of tuition and payments, but they also offer interest-free payment plans, and they can also set up a third-party billing if you have company sponsorship and they're willing to pay for your education or pay part of the tuition, they can do a direct billing to your organization so that you're only responsible for the remaining part not covered by your company. Um, their website is financialservices.wustel.edu. I recommend you visit that website and just see what some of these options are. WebStack, what is WebStack? When going through the student accounting portal, you will see something called WebStack. And this basically is where all the payments are received by Washington University. These accounts are created after your tuition deposit is received and once you officially join Washington University and say, I want to do the professional MBA or I want to do the Master of Accounting program, whatever it might be. Loan and refund disbursements. So whenever student loans are issued, we actually will send you a notification verifying, hey, X number of dollars was processed and posted to your student billing account. In the event that the amount of loans received are greater than tuition, we will actually issue you a refund disbursement for living expenses. This is where that cost of attendance comes in once again. Uh, typically, the refund periods are in May, August, September, and January. So that's usually whenever the disbursements would come in, and then the refunds are actually issued within seven to 10 business days after the monies are posted to your credit account. Uh, once again, remember that cost of attendance does vary by the program. Please work with the Olin Financial Services team to determine uh, what, if any of these funds are available for you. I wanna encourage you to view our upcoming events at olin.wustle.edu. Um, things are always moving and shaking here. Uh, we always like to keep things fresh. Uh, we always engage with everyone, our students. I work with about a thousand, maybe 1200 students a year. Uh, it's a real pleasure, I enjoy what I do. I've been here at the university nine years, but I've been in financial services about 12. Um, and it's one of those things that uh, you definitely, uh, you know, you're, you reap rewards. It's well worth the efforts that we spend every day. So uh, a couple, I thought I would maybe move on. There's some Q&A session that I wanted to, to save here for you, but I thought I would maybe kind of throw out a couple uh, frequently asked questions that students ask going along just to see if maybe we can turn up a little uh, presentation here. So 
One question I normally get is, <clears throat> Kyle, it's been a while since I've applied for financial aid or I fill out a FAFSA. Uh, can you help, can your office help me with the loan process? The answer is yes. Um, we have an open door policy unless we're meeting with someone, but uh, you know, if you need help with the FAFSA, completing your loan documentation, we're certainly happy to help schedule a time with you to do that, to do the entrance counseling. Likewise, we're happy to walk with you through the loan exit counseling at the end of your program. And we're here to be a resource even post-graduation. Um, our commitment uh, to you, uh, once you join the Olin Business School, we consider you part of the Olin family. And with that family, we wanna stay in touch. We'd like to hear from you and work with everyone going along. Um, so I also have another question is, can student loans be used to help a study abroad or a trip abroad? And the answer is yes, these programs are available. The thing is, is whenever you do, let's say a study abroad or something like that, we have to develop a budget for that particular study abroad. And remember that's its cost of attendance budget. But technically funds are available if you're looking at doing one of our exchange trips. If you're an executive MBA student looking for funding to go to China, which is a required component of that program, uh, then we're happy to help coordinate those activities as needed. Um, uh, another question I also get, at what point should I begin the financial aid process? Uh, and you know, it's every program will be a little bit different on that. Um, with the federal student loans, you can certainly apply as soon as the application is available. It all depends on when you anticipate starting your program. So contact the financial services team for clarification on which FAFSA or which multiple FAFSAs are needed to get the process going. Uh, if you're looking at private loans, I usually recommend about 60 to 90 days prior to the start of your program, okay? I wouldn't go much beyond that. Uh, the key is we don't want your credit check or credit ver verification to expire before we can certify the loan. So it's important that uh, we do this in a timely fashion so that, uh, so that you know you go through this application once and we minimize the number of hits that are on your credit report at one given time. Uh, another question is, my situation is a little unique. Uh, who do I contact with questions down the road? Uh, I mentioned we are a full service office uh, and we specialize in unique situations. Um, I can't always promise you that I'll tell you what you want to hear. Well, I, I guarantee you will hear what you need to hear to ensure compliance, to ensure that, uh, that your process, that your needs are met. And we view every request uh, very as important. So there are no dumb questions when it comes to financial services. In closing here, I wanted to maybe just uh, come up with a couple of thoughts here, or at least one big thought. Uh, the dean at the Olin Business School, uh, he likes to quote Shakespeare, but with my southern twang here, I uh, typically don't do that. However, I do have a colleague in, MB in, in our executive MBA program, I'll get it out here in a minute, that I do like the quote, her name is Edie Varley. And with Edie, there's a little quote that I, that I found that I thought was very interesting and very appropriate. Being at your best means you never lose. So whenever you apply for admission, whenever you're going through doing your research for schools, uh, be at your best. And as long as you do your best, you always have your A game going, okay? Look forward to seeing you here on campus here at Washington University in St. Louis. Thank you so much for joining me today and have a great day. Bye-bye.